So it all started with a heavy rain. And the heavy rain landed on my mother's flower bushes. They are big flowers with big leaves, so they catch a lot of water. So naturally, the flowers that were like this went like this. And once the flowers go down, they never pop back up. So I had to cut all the flowers off. And I have all these flowers with me now. And I don't know what Cullen is doing. He's licking something. And, <laughs> and so I have all these flowers. So I go, I'm going to bring them to all my friends' moms on Mother's Day. It was so nice. So I fashioned up this bouquet of flowers, like 80 of them. Just kidding. Not 80. And so, um... I'm driving with the flowers in a pot of water, and I and I make a right turn, you know, and so the pot of water dumps over onto me, floods my phone. car, Thank on you. my phone, phone breaks, and so I'm 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 in the right turn, and so I just keep going right <laughs> into someone's yard. <laughs> Can you get the flowers? Flowers were fine. <laughs> um. The pot was not, and so um, I start crying, you know, rush of adrenaline. Some man is walking by me, and he's like, are you okay? And I'm like, can I use your phone? And he's like, no. And so um, I was a little upset, and so I'm freaking out. So naturally, I uh, get back in the car and run home with my destroyed car. Um, Found out later that that was technically illegal. I was fleeing from the scene of a crime. <laughs> and um, so I go home and I burst into my house crying and my mom naturally goes, did you wreck the car? <laughs> I was like, yeah. So we went back, we knocked on the door and we found out that the person I hit was, the person's house that I hit was dead. What? <laughs> They were literally dead. <laughs> because of you. No! That's a common misconception. It was not me. They were dead from natural causes. Like what? I don't know. I didn't ask. They were dead. I didn't ask them what was wrong. Okay, you know what? And then, recently, I saw that they were selling all their dead belongings. So they took the insurance money and ran with it, did not fix the fence, it is still crooked. Do you drive by it every day and just like wince? No, I don't wince. <laughs> <laughs> I just look at it and go, oh, they didn't fix the fence. And um, I also destroyed public property, a sign that said, uh, like, this can only this bridge can only hold 30 tons. I feel like you couldn't even put 30 tons on the bridge, so I feel like it was okay. And they charged me for the sign. It was $125, which they failed to tell me at the time, and I just got the bill for it. It's been like a year. <laughs> Did and you give them flowers? Because then maybe you could get that No. Also, they spelt my name entirely wrong on my driver's license, so when I tried to give my lady my information, she's like, I can't find you. Are you sure you're not illegal? And it's like, yes. <laughs> I showed her my driver's license. She's like, oh, well, there's like all these weird spaces in it. And because you know, like, my last name is McMurray. Can I say that on YouTube? Oh, crap. It's fine. We'll bleep it out. <laughs> we'll bleep it out. Can you do that? Sure. Okay. So there was a space. And so last year at this time, I was just very frazzled. Dr. Schuster forced me to present an indie lab. And so I almost fainted, so I sat in the chair. Which brings us to the present time. To my second indie lab. <laughs> and you shine a light, which is the instant light, on a piece of metal, and the metal emits 
electrons, which slightly changes the uh, stopping voltage of the circuit. And the stopping voltage is, like the change in it is so tiny that you have to have this amplifier in the circuit. And we couldn't get our amplifier to work. We switched it. And we like made, even, our, made our own on like a yeah. solderless breadboard and it still didn't work. And, yeah. But we did manage to make some pretty colors with the light bulbs in the dark. That's what it looked like. And um, yeah, that was, it failed 10 days ago. And so this is our real indie lab. <laughs> Sabrina! <laughs> an exploration, I said that wrong, an exploration in warm and cool tones purpose. <laughs> we are both inquire and Mr. Kinworthy is always telling Mark to not have so much me. If you know Mark, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> what is me? Can you, Robbie, you know what Ming is. <laughs> You're it's in like, choir too. It's, this is for the benefit of the viewers. It's, called, it's like, it's when you have like a forward sound, so it's the difference between like, like oh, and like, eh. Yeah. So <laughs> it's, like, oh, it's like, ah, like that, that kind sound. of sound. So, so, can we show us some more examples? I don't really get it. <laughs> so, we wanted to, uh, like that, we wanted to like figure out we didn't want to quality. sing for you. We didn't, so so we didn't we did have a different instrument. There's Mark. I asked him if I could take this picture. <laughs> it was good. Yeah. So uh, just a little background. Uh, major scale has eight pitches. One and eight are the same, but they're in different octaves. Uh, minor scale also has eight pitches. Um, minor scale sounds kind of creepy. Um, shout out to Hillary and... Sam, the best oboe player in the state of Missouri. <laughs> He's not here. He's probably playing oboe. <laughs> and then we assigned an arbitrary number to each octave so that we could keep track of them. So like the, the bottom octave, like the first octave on the piano we said was one and but it wasn't even the bottom on the piano because we like here. This is the next one. None of the other instruments had yeah. octaves that low, so we just didn't. So this is the diagram of like the octaves that we tested and like which octave with the other instruments that they corresponded to. So we had four octaves of piano and then we had all those other instruments. Um, I, the piano and guitar and the piano and guitar were me. Um, violin was Rashawn. Uh, piccolo and flute were Grace Muldoon. And this is not in the right place. Right. That was you. You made this light. <laughs> this should oh. be right there <laughs> under that. And so, sorry. Um, that there's one octave that like everything had all the same octave, so we mainly focused on um, when we were comparing the instruments on in the same octave. Yeah. Go ahead. I'll press it. So this is kind of what our data looked like. Um, so oh, to take data, we we found the frequency for all of the notes, and so what we did was kind of similar to what Hillary and Sam did, where we highlighted four wavelengths. And then divided. Not necessarily wavelengths, but where the pattern repeated. Yeah, because they were super weird looking. Some of the other ones are prettier, but these, that one especially, is super weird. Um, and so we like select, we highlighted four, and then we divided the time, like one over the time divided by four. So that's kind of part of our error, so we'll talk about that. There's just more pictures. Um, here's our data table. Um, it's very long, so we had to cut it up. But, but you like, can see. the colors that are the same, like, go like in a row together. So like the dark blue and the like dark pink, pink color is the one that they all shared. And it was interesting because their frequency was always 571 hertz for the first note and then 800 for the second and 1000 for the last one. Yeah. And the reason that we think that our data was so good was because in Audacity when we went to find the period, um, it only rounded to the 0. .000 amount of seconds. And so when you get to a really short time, like it would say 0 .003 seconds for like, or I think this one was like, the period for four wavelengths was like 0 .014. And so like, even if they all weren't exactly 0 .014, they all rounded to 0 .014. So, so our data came out really nice that like literally all the notes that were it, the same note had the exact same frequency, but they probably weren't all the exact same frequency. Because of audacity. And there's just more. Yeah. Oh wait, can you go back? Well. <laughs> and then another example of that thing with Audacity is that here, for um, this is the highest octave we did. This happened for the piccolo and the piano. Um, that for the D and the G, we got the same 
frequency because and I think it's because of that rounding thing because it's such a small difference in period that audacity rounded to the same number both times so no matter like which part of the wave I tried to like find the period for um it was the same period for both of these two notes but can I hit it yeah go that's our error our lowest error was 0.9 and our highest error was 14% 15%. Which, the highest error came on those two notes that I said were probably, like, they were yeah. the same that shouldn't have been the same. Error got higher as you went up the scale. Conclusions. <laughs> Frequency <laughs> was the same for the same note in the same octave across all the instruments. Um, shout out, oh, and the ratio for octaves was 2 to 1. Shout out to Hillary and Sam again. Um, and then Audacity wasn't very precise with the period, so it was hard for us to accurately figure out how much error we really had like in tuning and stuff um and we said that the shape so our hypothesis was that the shape of the wave was what um determined the tone quality of the instrument and so um we did notice that like the we we didn't see because we were trying to find the difference between like warm and cool and we didn't really see a correlation there but we saw a correlation in like string instruments versus like wind instruments so um, we're thinking that in the future we would need to figure out more different aspects of the wave to analyze to figure out. Especially Mark Curtin. <laughs> yeah. We need him. Oh, Are you guys ready? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Christmas! Oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have time for a question. I made that. <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> it's, not, it's our very own Dr. Schuster. In high school. When he was not Dr. Schuster, he was just David Schuster. <laughs> <laughs> David <laughs> Schuster <laughs> and company. Uh, I think that was a, a censure at that time, wasn't it? Around like yeah, it was. Yeah. And I was wondering whether you were blo like bald in the middle. <laughs> I don't know. Do you like Benjamin Button? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any questions for the presenters? Can will you go stand up there next to it so we can? <laughs> yes. Come on, please, 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 please. Oh, that's another question for me. Any questions for, for the presenters? Good job. Okay. I have a question. What? Can you take us back to an early slide that talked about the failed photoelectric effect? Oh yeah. gosh, I guess. <clears throat> Wait, I should. Never mind. No, Colin, go. I was gonna ask how many. Um, Troughs and peaks did you use to do to divide to find the frequency? Four. Okay. And I think that it was usually I didn't use like peaks and valleys for most of them. I used like the part where they crossed the like x axis, I guess. Um, and then I would just because I found them easier to count than. Yeah. But yeah. That's a good four. idea. Cross point. Uh, I just think it's really beautiful that green and red make yellow, and you can see that on there. Yeah, because this is additive color, and we learned this in psychology, this is with light. It's red, green, and blue that make white light. But if you add red, green, and blue like colors, like with paint, you have like brown. So it's just like different light. Additive versus subtractive. Yeah. Really cool. Um, uh, there's, there's great regret that you weren't able to find uh, things. Like, I think that Audacity can do better than that, so if you want to talk to me sometime, I can help you find. I think it will easily go to, like, a, a microsecond, so that would be uh, much more accurate. Um, the other thing that I'm thinking about is that you wanted to compare the differences among all of the same note, but you found just the primary frequency, which is what defines them as the same note. So the next step needs to be to Yes, go into further, subtract one waveform from another. Get them to the same peak to peak and just subtract and see what's the difference between a piano and a violin. Uh, and Or you can do a fast Fourier transform, which will change it so that you can see the other frequencies, the harmonics that are present. And you can ask Emma about that and I think yeah, a few other people in the room. I, still, I, don't know. Know. Well, I was taking data, something that I noticed is that like on a guitar you have two E strings, you have a high E string, a low E string, and if you pluck one of the E strings, the other E string will vibrate. And then like if you, on the low E string, if you play a G, then the G string will vibrate, and like you can get all kinds of like, if you, like, it's cool. It's you, very cool. And I, but I had no idea how to like actually take data on that, so. <laughs> Your instrument, like, also when you plug different strings, parts of your instrument will vibrate, and that's to, like, help 
I don't know, like have it more sound and get a better tone out of your instrument. So better instruments like vibrate more. So that's also something that you could study. I don't know. Yeah. Oh yeah, cool. I mean, that's what makes the a Stradivarius worth hundreds of thousands of dollars, mm -hmm. right? Because oh, yeah. Yeah, I have one. <laughs> just one? Uh, Jack's rich. That's your reply. Yeah. Just one. <laughs> uh -huh. Absolutely. And something that I was also thinking about when I was taking data was that, um, like, Rashawn's violin has, like, F holes in the side, whereas, like, my guitar has, like, one tone hole in the middle. And, like, how does that affect the quality of the sound and stuff? But I didn't really know how to analyze it. Right, so we can get those tools into your hands, and you guys can go further with this next semester if you're interested. Because, I mean, it's a wide open field. We've got several groups looking at it from different angles, and yeah, very interesting stuff. So. Alright, thank you. Can we all get next Wait. to it? Wait, yeah, you need to go get next to oh. We are going to do that? Yes. yes. We have to compare. Make sure that it's oh. the real deal. Sabrina, Sabrina, don't be so mean to the screen. Stop breaking it. <laughs> <laughs> no, you didn't do it that hard. I'm just going to make it Yay. Okay. Okay. So we got to go. So, <laughs> <laughs> is it the real deal? I wouldn't have to do it again. Can we zoom? Yeah. Zoom. <laughs> you gotta move you gotta the camera. You gotta, you gotta tilt the, yeah. How old were you in this picture? Were you a senior? Mm-hmm. How old were you when you were a senior? Hold on, wait, let me show you. How old as you are. Are you about 23 or something? There you go, is that better, man? Yeah. Okay. You gotta take a picture of this. Okay. Make the face. Sabrina. Sorry! <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great! So, let's do some physics. I guess. <laughs>